Hi everyone! Today we will check out NICE Engine Frame. Engine Frame is a portal for high performance computing applications. It enables users to submit, control, and monitor their job runs in a very intuitive way. It is compatible with a variety of schedulers and works with on premise clusters as well with clusters located in the cloud. So, this video tutorial is showing the user's perspective. So it is interesting for everyone dealing with high performance computing applications and for everyone who has to submit HPC job runs. So we will cover how you can submit, control and monitor your jobs and really important, all the connected data with it. So engine frame is accessed via a web browser. So you don't need any specific operating system or software installed on your local machine to submit your HPC jobs. And as a user, to access the HPC portal, you go to Applications. And now here you can see the user interface showing the menu and all the different tools on the left-hand side. For showcasing the functionality and the advantages of EngineFrame, we will perform a typical workflow, so starting with a job submission. The only thing we need to make sure before we can actually submit a job is that we have all the input data we need in place. And for that, we can go here to files. And now here we can see our remote home directory, which is located on the same machine on which engine frame is deployed. And now here you can upload your local files, which you need for your job submission. So for submitting the jobs, we go to the service section and for this video tutorial, our showcase application is OpenFoam. So we go to the OpenFoam service. But of course, you can have services for the applications that you typically run. So the creation and customization of these services is really easy and your system administrator can do that. Now we see the job submission interface. And all these input fields, which you can see here, these also can be adapted to your needs. So whenever you feel that there's something missing, you can just tell your admin to add these respective input fields. And I believe by now you already get a feeling for the great customization potential of engine frame because all services and input fields can be adapted to your needs and your typical use cases. So for the job submission itself, we start with entering a job name and we can select a so-called now here CFD project, but the project selection is interesting maybe for um, accounting later on. So for example, when your team wants to know which project needed how much resources. And also the view of these projects can be personalized for you. So depending on your permissions and tasks, you should only see these projects which are interesting to you. Okay, now we can also select the version of our application. So here it's open form. And now we can give additional application options. So in our case, these are the additional options for our open form solver. Typically, you would put these additional options into your submission script, but in engine frame, you don't have to change and manage these scripts for different job runs. So you can keep your submission scripts and input files as generic as possible and provide any additional application options via this input field. And this will make your job runs repeatable and your submissions really transparent because these options will be saved and stored in a database and can be retrieved later on. And we will also see this when we later on go to the resubmission of a job run. And for showcasing this possibility, we will now give here a dummy option minus no clean. Next thing is the selection of our input file. And either we can select a file here in our remote home directory or we also have the possibility to upload a local file. Next, we come to the selection of the number of processors. And also this selection and this drop-down menu can be personalized to you. So maybe depending on the project which you are working on. Now we select our cluster and engine frame in general is capable of connecting to various clusters. So it can also connect to an on-premise clusters or to a cluster in the cloud. So you as a user can then select to which cluster you want to submit your job. And then depending on the selection of your cluster, you can also select the respective computing queue. 
And then at last, we could also give additional job options for our scheduler. So with all these inputs, now we are good to go and we can submit our job. So as soon as we submit our job, we are directly taken to the spooler section. And in the spooler section, we can see all the information and data which is available for our job run. So right now we can see it is still processing. And while it is still processing, we can already stream some files. So for example, here we can stream the log file of our open form job. And now for that, we get an extra window showing the progress of our run. And this is even without that we have to navigate to the right directory or typing any command in any terminal. So this window now can stay open. We can revisit it at any time, checking the status of our job run. So now we can see that the job has finalized. So we can go back to our spooler here. And besides the progress, which has now changed to completed, we can also see the metadata of our job run, all connected data, and also some information about the job run itself. Also, the spooler section is completely customizable. So for example, you can define scripts which run in the background and perform actions on specific file types. So as we have seen here, for example, we have the streaming for the log files. Here we have an automatic preview for PNG files. And now that our job is completed, we can check out the ability to start the para view for post-processing directly from the spooler section. So let's check for our form file. And here, if we go to actions, we can see the option to start para view directly. And now this post-processing is started in a nice DCV remote desktop session. Again, without um, navigating to any directory, without having to type the correct um, commands. And then now we can go to this uh, remote desktop, which is um, seamlessly integrated with engine frame. And now here we can start directly with our post-processing action. And just for showcasing how well NiceDCV can handle demanding 3D applications, we can check out this one example. If you keep in mind that this is running on a remote machine, then you can see that you absolutely have no delay and it's a really great user experience. Okay, so coming back to the spooler section, the last and really powerful feature I want to showcase you here is the possibility to resubmit your job run. So here we can see that all the options we gave earlier for the previous job run are fetched from the database and all these input fields are pre-populated. So here we can also see this dummy option we gave earlier, the minus no clean. Of course, now you can also change um, your input files or also your additional um, options, but altogether this will make your jobs repeatable. Other menu options we have over here is the sessions. Here we can see our running um, nice DCV remote desktop sessions. Here we can have an overview of all our job runs. And under hosts, we can check the status of our nodes. And this can either be via thumbnails or we can also have a list view. Okay, so altogether, we checked how you can submit, control and monitor your HPC job runs. We checked out the powerful spooler section where you have an overview of all your connected data in one place. And also, if you really want to go deeper into the endless customization possibilities of Engine Frame, then please check out this technology showcase. Okay, so I hope I could help you getting started in Engine Frame. Thanks for watching. Bye.